my name is Mike M Zero MSN, and uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been building the capacitor that you've seen in the beginning of this video. Um, now, the reason for the build is I am going to start a project uh, for my next magnetic loop. Um, anyway, let me explain what it's going to look like, um, or hopefully what it's going to look like, and the reason for building the capacitor. Anyway, join me over here. Right, OK, so I want to build a magnetic loop, but, you know, normally a magnetic loops are just a circle with a of a smaller loop in the middle of it and the capacitor at the top or a capacitor at the bottom of the loop at the, either which way what i want to do is build one of these okay where this is the back and this is the front and i'm going to put the capacitor that i've just built here Okay, and my loop, coupling loop, is going to be at the bottom. So this is a figure of eight, and that goes to the radio. So this is a figure of eight um, antenna, or magnetic loop. Um, and the, the idea is that you put the... Um, now, it's difficult to explain this, uh, but if you see the loop looking from here downwards, um, you've got the capacitor and you've got one part of the loop coming up this side and the second part of the loop going down that side. And it's going to be connected. So the capacitor is going to be in here. OK, this is the, uh, the top to the bottom. So if you can imagine it doing that across the top of you like this. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get it. Um, so that's the idea behind the loop. Um, it's a figure of eight loop. Uh, I've done one before, but it failed miserably. Uh, so this time I, I started again, um, but I'm going to do it for the 40 meter band and it might tune 80, uh, but it's primarily designed for the 40 meter band. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the idea. So what you're going to see is the, the construction of this, which is here, that in its case of this capacitor. Enjoy.
Okay, so I have constructed a 30 set thin, <laughs> a 30 thin set, get it right, um, capacitor. Um, I've 3D printed the, um, the black uh, discs uh, which hold the capacitor in place. Uh, purchased the um, the fins from Epsi, along with the um, spacers. Uh, the the threaded rod I managed to buy from um, B and Q or um, a DIY shop um, in the UK. Um, and uh, I've spent the afternoon constructing it. Um, it's all looking quite nice. To be fair. And uh, working. I'll test it now and see what the, uh, the capacitance is. We have uh, 23.6 um, with the capacitor uh, open-ish. It's a little bit, maybe I might be able to uh, Reduce it a touch more. Okay, 23. So keep on watching. We'll see what it is fully meshed. I'm hoping it's going to be more than 90. Closer to 150 would be nice. I think it will be though. Oh, close enough. 143. And that's uh, fully meshed. That should be enough, I think. Now that's going across two banks. So now if we just take it off the bank, just grab this a bit and I'll show you what I mean. So there we are. So we're going just across the centre and the outside, this bank here. And we've got 284. So now, if both of these banks are connected, we'll see how many uh, puff we have then, bear with me. Okay, so I've shorted the two banks out. So it's now one big bank, uh, and the center is the, uh, is the it's one side of the capacitor, and the other side of the capacitor is the two outside banks. And what we have, 500, mm -hmm. 550 puff, and fully unmeshed. Seventy six. So unmeshed. Seventy seventy six. Fully meshed. 557-ish. So we could make this switch. It's an interesting thought. Okay, so we have our um, capacitor and I have wrapped some insulation tape uh, around the, f the, um, the 3D printed um, holders uh, so that it will fit inside my tube. Um, now, I've just 3D printed um, this, as you've seen, 
And the idea behind this is uh, I'm going to get the motor on. Now, as long as I've got my measurements correct, um, I should be able to just mount this for you. Probably find that I've got uh, the wrong size of screw on it, in which case I'll have to get some more screws. But we'll find out. So that's pretty much how we do it. With luck, the uh, all the sizes are correct. I might have this spot on. So we've uh, mounted our motor on our template or holder and the idea is that this would be dropped onto these and it should meet perfectly in the middle um, but the hose are slightly too small so I have to drill them out and then we'll mount that in a minute or two. Okie dokie, so first and foremost, let's Right, so the reason for the gun, because I need to put a little bit of glue about there-ish. And I need to just see if I can screw it onto the glue. So that should certainly stick it to there. No. I don't really want too much space, so maybe here-ish for this. goes against my better judgment but I want to fill the center of this with glue if I can now here comes the fun yeah that will do the job How am I going to achieve this little miracle? I don't know how much time that's going to give me. Probably none. But let's see if I can 
force it on. Beautiful. Okay, so there's um, tube, um, aquarium tube and hot glue over the, the ends of each of these um, capacitor stays. Um, that's to prevent any electric shock should you accidentally touch them. Um, so obviously they're going to be uh, have high voltage in them. I mean, you shouldn't ever get close to it when it's transmitting anyway. But, you know, just in case they're there. Um, and uh, so that's it. That's the capacitor finished um, with, the, uh, with the drive motor on the top. The insulated connector. And then obviously the drive turns the centre. Uh, rotator and then you've got two stators on the outside of that um, excellent stuff there we go all we got to do now is find a housing for it <laughs>